Howdy, David here. Last time I spoke a little bit about how I came to work at NASA against what I would have considered all odds, really. It was not somewhere that I expected to work. How I continued to stay there is perhaps just as surprising. I worked on a project that involved economics. I'm an economist, not a scientist. And we were looking at the economics of pest management using data relayed by satellite to predict the outbreak of certain uh, agricultural pests and then spraying to, to deal with that issue. Um, the problem is, as great as that project was in many ways, it was a little early and premature. We hadn't done much in the way of classifying land cover types, saying what was on the ground. And so we were a little bit early with it. Uh, NASA asked me to stay on after the summer was over. I was there as a summer intern. And so I stayed on for a few months, basically going over the project and critiquing it and saying what worked and what didn't. And uh, I don't like to think it was on me, but I think the project was just premature, but ultimately it got canceled. And I was sort of proud of being able to help in the decision, but then a little bit mortified at the fact that the project was canceled and I was really no longer working there. So I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And by that point, I'd love being around an astronaut, working with very smart people, working on a mission that really meant something and that people were fascinated by. So this was a hard transition. So what I did was I talked to my friends at the U.S. Geological Survey who were using satellite data to try to identify what was on the ground. We call it land cover classification. It has nothing to do with classification. It has to do with cover types. So I talked to my friends and together we worked on teaching me how to do earth remote sensing, taking satellite data, aircraft data, and data from the ground and putting them together in what we call a multi-stage sampling model to predict what's on the ground. Well, as you can imagine, I was new at this. I wasn't particularly good at it. I needed direction at every step of the way, and that was great. But I also had to produce work. So ironically, we used what we called Landsat images, uh, data types that came in an image that were black and white issues of what was on the ground. The resolution was not very good. It was uh, over one acre for each picture element known as a pixel. And we would work from there using, as I say, the aircraft and the ground data as well. And I happened to find, um, luckily, an image of the big island of Hawaii, which was very beautiful and had little to no cover, uh, little to no cloud cover on it, that is. So what I did was I did a classification of the cover types there, which was challenging because uh, Hawaii is beautiful and great to go do ground truth there, but you don't know a lot of the vegetation types probably unless you're native Hawaiian, uh, kukui bush and how trees and other things, which I didn't know anything about. So identifying them on the ground, uh, pretty difficult. But anyway, I did the best I could. It was probably not a very good piece of work, but I have, it turns out, didn't know this, a pretty good eye for color. And what you do is you take the data that you have, that you've developed, and then you do what's called composing a false color composite. So you take the image and you color each of the land cover types you believe you've identified a specific color. And so I colored sugar, uh, orange, and pineapples yellow, and the sea around it a lovely blue, and I came up with this false color composite image. It was probably very, very poor technically. Uh, the irony of it is, it was nice looking as an image. And so, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, that first image, which I really didn't pay much attention to, ended up being picked up and hung in the Smithsonian Institute, albeit under the section Science as Art, and hung upside down. But nevertheless, it hung in the Smithsonian and they put it on the cover of a of a booklet for legislators called a legislator's guide to landsat so i thought it was pretty funny i uh, here i am working at nasa where i never expected to do to be uh, working in science programs which i never expected to do and working on earth, re earth remote sensing which i needed a lot of help to do and which i probably wasn't very good at and here we go my first project gets hung in the smithsonian uh, it's it's another surprise in the journey that uh, began with the move to NASA and then just continued. So what do I learn from this? Well, 
you have, sometimes you have talents you don't know you have. Uh, picking out colors turned out to be a useful one for me. Sometimes those talents matter more than the ones you think you're really good at. I thought I was a great economist. Economics figured little to none in this. Uh, sometimes you just have to adjust and be positive and go with the flow and take advantage of what opportunities come along. In fact, you always have to do that. Uh, making yourself a priority. Work is great, but if you're not a priority to yourself, you won't be a priority to anybody else and you won't be able to help other people. So those are the, some of the things I learned. I thought it was a fun experience and uh, it was a really great start to my work at NASA. So uh, next time I'll little, tell you a little bit more about my work there and also a little bit about why NASA is such a great entity, why what we discover there is so important and why NASA is such a great value for the dollars we spend on it. Uh, I used to think that spending money in space maybe wasn't so smart. Well, clearly we don't spend it in space. We spend it on Earth and we spend it on things that find wide application throughout the economy, both technically and economically. So I'll talk a little bit about that next time. So take care until then. Take care. See ya. Bye bye.